The New York Asian community rallied together and this attacker is finally being brought to justice. But let's talk about what this all means. Yeah, we got to talk about that. This story went super viral a month ago. Long story short, the developments say that Hassan Saab is going to be brought up on 14 assault charges. All the charges against Ting Duo Lei, the immigrant Chinese father who was just defending his son and himself at his house have been dropped. And a lot of people are saying it's because the uh, Brooklyn Chinese community mobilized together against bullying. And this article states, Chinese New Yorkers say the fight represents the insecurity and unfair treatment they have felt in recent years. All right, so we're going to break down this and let's talk about like if if this is really unfair, did it require too much? Like, did it have to need like all these thousands of protesters and letters being written just for this guy to get can uh, charge for what he clearly did. So we're going to talk about it. Please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. Yeah, you guys check out Smala at SmalaSauce.com real quick. Um, I'll say this, man. It is kind of shocking that it took, let's just say, the mobilization of 4,000 people mm -hmm. writing letters to political officials when there's clearly multiple pieces of video evidence against Hassan Saab. Yeah, like, I, I was like, what? We, we got to just get 5,000 people together just to get the regular default justice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for sure. I think it was unquestionable. I mean, but you had all the video evidence. Now, I don't know what was going on, but it did seem like it was taking a while. Now, I, of course, the justice system, it operates at its own speed, and there's all these different legality things. Is it a hate crime? Is it not? Did he say things and slurs while he was attacking? I don't... Like, so all these things might have been holding it up, but regardless, I think the outcome is favorable, but it just felt like it took too much. Right. Like, why did it require that many people? Right. Let's just say Hassan Saab had attacked a, uh, like, a white kid, right? Because Hassan Saab is like, he looks kind of white, but he's Arab. Anyway, like, he, like then would they have needed 4,000 white people to come together right. to get him charged well, with what he already deserved to get charged with pretty clearly well, with the video it, evidence? Is it possible that he was going to get charged and everything was going to follow this path, but the Asian community generally felt insecure and felt like, oh my gosh, if we don't do it, then he's not going to get charged properly. Right. You, but I, maybe, I do think they felt like it could have been a Vincent Chin situation. Where, you know, the Vince, it's like the, the, right. where the attacker gets off. Yeah. That would have been crazy. That would have been something to me. I would have been like, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's 2023. We got the video evidence. What is going on? Right, right. So I guess what's your main uh, question? All right. So my main question, and I'm going to get to that, but I got to talk about what this article is talking about. It's saying that this person says that the incident mirrored many people's shared life experiences amongst them, as well as their children, have encountered bullying in schools. Mm -hmm. Getting bullied is our shared life experience. Mm. That is a quote of That's a, a line. quote. Yeah. So is being bullied part of the Asian experience of especially growing up in just... A in particular, possibly the Chinese experience. Yeah, and, and and just growing up in a community that's not your own, you know? And I would say that, unfortunately, I don't want to say that's a big part of the Asian experience, but that is something that a lot of Asian kids did indeed experience right. on some level. Somebody says, let's make some noise, let's build some momentum to let people know that you're attacking Asians. We are tired of listening to politicians. We're tired of lip service. We want action. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I feel that. And, you know, we made a video about this a month ago, and we were talking about it, and just hopefully that things like that just added to it. But, of course, man, shout out to all the people who, who put the boots on the ground and actually either wrote letters or protested physically outside. You know, that's right. important. I mean, I think mobilizing this many people like this in a very peaceful manner it does show the system something that, you know, politicians are going to get voted out, that there's clearly a lot of political willpower behind this movement. And it's important to show. But I guess a lot of people in the discussion section were kind of talking about, well, should Asians just get stronger? Should people fear us more so these attacks don't need to happen in the first place? Because obviously 4,000, 5,000 people coming together, amazing. That's what we should have done. I can't believe Ting Duole even got charged with anything to begin with. He totally didn't deserve it. You look at the video evidence. There's no way he should have got charged initially. That totally was because he was Chinese, to be honest. And it's like, but it's like, I guess, how do you prevent it in the future? Right. Well, I, I don't know. I'm, I, I feel like my thought, especially for like maybe, you know, a lot of Asian people and maybe particularly Chinese people, I think that ultimately 
it's good because this shows that mobilizing and getting together can make an impact or at least push things You're through. You're saying petitioning the system. So, so I think more and more people are going to be ready to be mobilized for other things that are so clearly, clearly, clear as day, you know, against us. Uh, but I do think that it's going to take a lot longer for individual Asians to get stronger and prevent this. Like... What I'm saying is that I think rallying together in a group is a lot easier than it is to individually become like learn self defense and martial arts and learn how to fight. Right. You and know to what I mean? That whole vigilant yourself yeah, on a micro level. That whole process and mindset that it takes for you to become more of a warrior is maybe a longer process than it is to be like, hey guys, let's come together, come together, meet me outside, and we're gonna go protest. Right. Organize and rally. on WeChat, right? Yeah, or at least like share this and write this letter. Like that is really what I feel like a lot of the Asian community is more fit to do right. at the moment. But which you kind of need both, right? You do need both. You need both. And I'm saying that people should do both. But what I'm, what I'm seeing is that, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's just human nature, I guess. Let's just get into the comment section. Somebody said, the young Asians don't need a call on the mob. That would just lead to more problems. But with Americanized Asians, some have lost the sense of family and culture. Not many bigger brothers and bigger sisters watching out for the little brothers and little sisters anymore. We're only relying on authorities for justice. It used to be, if you mess with one of us, you mess with all of us. Also, that 24-year-old guy is just a coward for fighting and beating up kids. Mm -hmm. I guess this guy was saying, Andrew, there's so many factors here, right? There's the political mob that assembled, right? There was mostly parents. They were not gangster at all, mm -hmm. right? But then some people were actually calling for, like, actual Asian gangsters from the community, which is involving, like, a whole other thing, right? That's the underworld and stuff like that. And, like we said, they don't necessarily, like, operate that way. That's not what gangsters do like maybe if you mess with one of their own they'll come back at you you're but saying like, if the 13 year old boy had been part of a gangster yeah, family they're not yeah. really vigilantes for the community i would say that's not really their role you know that's right right like right known to do somebody says should should there have been an asian mob no violence begets violence you don't respond to an aggressor post incident by calling on a hitman to escalate it unless you are a barbarian when you are attacked you absolutely have the right to defend yourself but it's very different from seeking vengeance if someone is knocking on your door and assaults you the victim Victims should be able to fight back without being charged, knowing that their life is in danger. Mm. So I think that that was the main thing that got everybody riled up. This guy is just defending his family at his house, and he still got charged. Mm. But yeah, you're right. Obviously, I don't think that we should revert, even though I think that other communities, they may have responded in that way, like another community, not the Chinese community. It's difficult to ask the Chinese community to be warlike, right? Because right. it's not. Right. Somebody saying, uh, this generation of Asians are soft as hell. I immigrated to the U.S. from the Philippines at the age of five. My grandfather made it a priority that I train and know how to defend myself. Mm. I guess, what is it? Like, is it just a difference between Asian mentalities, Andrew? Are, like, for example, Southeast Asians going to let this happen how it happened with the Chinese in, in, in Brooklyn? Uh, I don't know. I mean, probably... A lot of people are going to say probably not, that other groups are going to react differently if it happened in their community. That's probably true. Right. Just you like know? different breeds of birds but, or different breeds of dogs react differently in different but, scenarios. But I right? also think like the type of people who, you know, moved to the community, they were maybe leaving that life, you know? Maybe if this happened more in like... You know, because a lot of that Brooklyn, Chinatown a crowd, I mean, as was originally from Chinatown. Yeah, yeah. And then also just like... <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I guess they feel like this. You do have to push for the authorities to do something because at the end of the day... You're talking about the, the system, the machine. Yeah, if the system doesn't do anything, then it kind of jeopardizes the whole community. Because if you feel like that you're not protected within your own community then that's not good vibes. That's right. going to be bad for everybody. Somebody says they're not picking on Filipinos, dude, and if they do, Filipinos will go crazy and get gully, basically. Somebody said, yep, just East Asians, they're weak on an individual basis. This Korean guy said, I'm Korean, and let me tell you this, they only understand the sword, so you guys better wake up and start fighting back. Someone said, uh, but somebody defended sort of the passiveness of the Chinese community, saying Asians are more passive because we are usually working hard and we are employed, so we are worried about losing our employment mm, and then somebody yeah. else said you know we are very passive because we chose to kill our own masculinity to chase education to steal the white man's jobs basically uh in the corporate world well everybody's gonna see this differently because i think some people view 
a individual attack on an individual Asian as something super heinous and it's like, oh, disrespectful. I would never right. let that happen. I'm, I'm going to do everything in my power to never let that happen to right. me. Like, some guys are really offended by being a man that's not being treated like a man. Right, right. And then other people are like, well, you know, you look at the upside and Asians are doing fine in the macro sense overall on average. Uh, so, you know, these things that happen, it's, you know... Not the biggest deal. That's what some people are thinking. Somebody said, no, this was great. We got the outcome that we wanted. We petitioned the system. It just took a lot longer, but nobody needed to get in trouble. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, I think that, again, I think you have to do both. I think you have to step up your own individual self-defense and awareness and prepare your kids for things like this. And I hope some do. I hope some are. I mean, I would, if I was a parent, you know, that's what I my plan would be to do. But uh, it's good to know that the system's gonna listen when you rise up. And that is encouraging because, you know, at least you have the numbers. Right. Somebody said that we need to learn from black people and not take people's attacks on our community. And then somebody said, this, uh, a black guy actually chimed in and said, well, but then it also flips where a lot of people have like, just think racist things against black people, but maybe yes, they're very intimidated of them. And somebody said, yes, but a lot of outward racism is actually driven by fear or the lack of fear. Basically, this guy said the primary culprit of racism is either fear or the lack of fear. So maybe people can be racist against black people because they're scared of them, but then people are racist towards Asians because there is a lack of fear of any consequences. Mm. Yeah, that's actually really, really interesting. Um, like we said, guys, I mean, for sure, I think the situation when it comes to Asians, Andrew, is that people don't feel like there will be a sort of a normative amount of consequences or repercussions. Yeah. That's why they indulge in it. Um, somebody said, mobilizing is great, but nothing is better than taking self-defense classes and getting in the gym and lifting weights. People who can defend themselves rarely get targeted. And someone said, for sure, but I shouldn't have to lift weights to not be bullied. And someone said, well, as someone who lifts and I do a PPL split, which is a push-pull legs, Andrew, I have a V taper, but it doesn't mean my body is more functional or that I have a lot of fighting ability. <laughs> uh, as somebody who trains martial arts, Andrew, what, what do you say to this? This guy was like, well, I mean, I'm buff and I like look good on hinge for yeah. the girls, but like No, I mean, it, it's definitely a lifestyle thing and like I think from a young age kids need to not just learn how to punch and kick, but really how to like handle themselves in tense situations and how to use their verbal to de-escalate and also to use like different tactics. I think that just trying to like tell kids, just trying to tell like a little Chinese kid to be more like aggressive and brutish is not fully going to work. Right. Like Especially have, if the kid is already in that Snorlax archetype. Like, you have to build it into their lifestyle and teach them, like, hey, these are the different things that you can do. It's not just about fighting or getting beat up. Because if those are the two options, a lot of kids are still going to get beat up. Right. A lot of it is about cortisol management, situational yeah. awareness, these things that can cause your muscles actually to, like, lock up yeah, in, but in that uh, moment. I will say that although I wish more Asian people were jumping in to or more people were jumping in to defend the family and, and the kid that in these attacks, in these multiple attacks, I would say at least someone was filming it. I think a lot of people think that standing by and filming it is a waste of time because you need to get your hands dirty. And I think in this day and age, it's not the wrong move if you know that you cannot fight. Right, it is better than nothing, absolutely. Yes, it is 100% better than nothing. If you know you cannot fight, filming it for evidence is not wrong either. Yeah. But, I mean, but obviously, everybody should increase their kind of uh, self-defense on some level. For sure, for sure. I mean, I think there's a lot of macro takeaways and there's a lot of micro takeaways as well. Andrew, um, I'm just glad that the community came together, right? Because this was sort of the, the straw that broke the camel's back. I just... Even to me now, just talking about it, I'm mad that Ting Duale even got charged with assault to yeah, begin with. It is weird. Because from the video, it's so clear, 10 out of 10, he's defending his family mm -hmm. from like attackers that are trying to like invade his house. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I'll say this, man. I think that the Chinese community, or maybe specifically, let's just call it the Chinatown Canto community in New York, I think that the perception is that they're treated like pigeons. I'm not saying that they are. I'm just saying the treatment is like that they're pigeons. And pigeons are harmless. They, they're often found together, but they don't necessarily have a unified strategy all the time. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like all the pigeons were able to come together to make a, a lot of noise. And it's not that you can really put 
a hawk's brain into a pigeon to make them like attack pigeons mm -hmm. because the pigeons, Andrew, are generally not aggressive, mm -hmm. right? They're not aggressive birds. You right. know, they're not birds of prey. If anything, they get preyed on, um, at least in the streets. I'm, I'm giving, listen, guys, don't be offended by this analogy. I'm just talking about a street type of setting context right mm -hmm. now. And I just feel like it's a real question for people like, do we want to stay this way? Or what is going to change about this equation moving forward? Mm. Yeah. I guess uh, you guys let us know in the comments down below what you all think about this. Obviously, the general outcome, this guy's facing 14 counts. Whether or not he be, he's guilty for all 14, he's going to go to jail. This guy's going to jail for years, right? Whether it's eight years or four years, it's probably somewhere in between and there. We'll, and we'll, he'll get to see how tough he is during his jail stint. Yeah. If he wants to beat up like 13-year-old Chinese kids... In jail, I'll tell you this, it's a yeah. very, very, very different and, context. And I, and I think that there is some kind of closure or satisfaction within the community because now you know that uh, there will be justice in the community, that the community does not weigh the lives of a group more than another group. You know right. what I mean? So. so anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the comments section below. Do you think that this unity will continue? How should people use it? And uh, what do we think about reactive versus proactive macro to micro? Let us know what you guys think in the comments section below. Until next time, with a hot pot, boys. We out. Peace. Peace.